Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Josh and Around Milwaukee. My name is Josh Albrecht, and with me, as always, is... It's Josh Albrecht over here. That's right. Josh Albrecht. Josh Albrecht. And with us today is Monica Miller, the Director of Galleries and Community Engagement for the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Technology... And <laughs> Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design... <laughs> But also known as Maya. Too. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. We do work with technology though. So that's very true. It's, it's like you knew. It's you already knew without asking anything. This is why they say Maya. Because you can just say Maya. <laughs> and then it's like, got it. Done. But I was like, I'm gonna get fancy. I'm gonna say it, and then I butchered it. <laughs> Two Joshes are better than one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Josh's having some fun because two Josh's are better than one. Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, Monica Miller is with us. Thank you for being with us today, Monica. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's exciting to have you here on uh, Josh and Around Milwaukee. Um, and we're just excited to learn just a little bit about what, what maybe you do and what, uh, what Maya does and just dive in. So, uh, how people can experience it, uh, be a part of it, and um, you know, even if you're a traveler coming into town, like mm -hmm. how that connection can come about. So, uh, the first thing we definitely know we want to ask about though, before we get anywhere, is about some holiday stuff coming up. Oh, yeah, we want to talk about that up front. Yes, yeah. we, were, we were talking about it earlier. We're like, we got to just dive right in. The yeah, we got to We got to understand what's going on here with the, with the holidays in Maya. All right, so we have an annual event called the Holiday Sale at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, Maya for short. Um, Did you get that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's typically the first weekend of December, so this year the exact dates are December 5th through 7th. Um, and it's a three-day situation where you can come and support and shop from our students and alumni, so you can choose between uh, emerging and established creative work. Um, and it's an awesome program. Uh, it's one of our most popular events on campus. I mean, folks ask us all the time throughout the year, how can I buy and support work from these students? And this is the perfect opportunity to do so. Um, we typically have more than 120 participants that include a mix of those students and alumni. And a part of what this is, what makes this so special is that it's a bit of a scholarship support for our students as well. So there's a 30-70 split. So the creatives get 70%. 30% of those sales go to support student scholarships, and it's usually really impactful for us. Very cool. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Um, and so the, the different, you know, artworks and, and pieces that are being sold, I mean, get, play this out for us, right? What what a, Give us some examples of different type of things people are going to see for sale. Absolutely. So we'll see, you know, whatever you think of creatively that you may want to purchase that's homemade, you, you kind of go like, okay, I could buy local for that. We probably have it. So ceramics, um, fibers work. So hats, scarves, mittens, um, original paintings, prints, if you can't afford an original painting. Um, something super popular by our students are stickers. So for somebody who's really on a budget, you can buy a ton of stickers of original art from people, and those so, are so popular. Um, Keychains, uh, we also have you know, somebody who comes in and w works with wood and they kind of replicate sports memorabilia on those wood panels. Very so, like, cool. if you're a Packers fan, Brewers fan, Bucks fan, something to hang up in your house uh, that's made here in Milwaukee. Um, and, yeah, uh, ornaments, of course. Uh, yeah, tons of stuff. It's really fun. As an avid collector, this could be your opportunity to get something <laughs> custom done yeah. for Pabst. Oh, that's true. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff. I do think it's interesting too because when people think of you know these type of things and, and just might in general, their mind might go to just painting, like mm -hmm. you said. And it's so much more, yeah. right? That these students go there and, and can learn about and experience and and hone their craft. Um, and then it sounds like this holiday sale is a good opportunity to see that all on display. Yeah, and what, that's one of the biggest misconceptions about Maya is that we're just a big building full of painters, which you can find plenty of those for sure, and a lot of talented painters. But design is also a part of that. So even last year, one of my favorite pieces available during the holiday, holiday sale was this product that a product design student was messing around with called a wobble. And it was sort of this uh, geometric shaped uh, plant holder that 
kind of moves around on its own and helps you. Uh, it's kind of like a fidget toy for your desk. Um, and it was just beautifully made, but they went on to kind of replicate that for their senior thesis project that happens every April. Um, they sold out immediately. Okay. Uh, and it was just really cool. And so you can also see these sort of prototyped projects from emerging also just small business owners, probably future small business owners as well. Um, so it's a really cool opportunity to see some new stuff. Okay, I'm going to nerd out a little bit here for a second. Let's do it. But like, so 3D printing yes. okay, has become like a huge thing, right? Because people started making 3D printers that could you could buy on Amazon. And I'm sure in comparison to like what a lot of people at my ad might use, they're, mm -hmm. you know, tchotchkes in comparison. <laughs> but uh, how much is, has that changed what you guys have seen at my ad as far as, you know, what people are, are making yeah. in the school? Okay. So to see your nerd out, <laughs> I we have an emerging technology center. So you weren't wrong. Yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah. In the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So we were, the, it's the Lubar Emerging Technology Center, and I love this space in our school so much. Um, so it was created to to be a place to have those questions, like what are we going to do when we have all this new technology coming in that maybe we aren't as familiar with as makers and using, so like 3D printers, virtual reality, even AI. And so this space is where students can ask those questions and say, hey, I want to play with 3D printing, or hey, I want to play with virtual reality. They go into this space, and the space says, great, we'll buy it for you, learn it, and teach us. And then we can implement it. Mm. And so um, oh, because it's that. emerging, yeah. we had like a, a fleet of 3D printers in that space, and now they've moved into our normal lab system because they're no longer emerging. They're fully integrated. And right. you know that lab yeah. has more space for new technology. So we have a ton of 3D printed stuff, but also the thing with 3D printing, obviously, to get a really good model, it takes days. Yeah. That still is our case. But if you want a quick mock-up of something, just print it in a few hours, yeah, that can happen too. What's, what's the next emerging thing? Like, what's the newest thing in the center? Yeah, yeah what's in the lab, yeah. AI yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Which is terrifying. To me, by the way, because your work's going to take over. Because it's it's like I just think the AI we have now is mm -hmm. the worst it'll ever be, and that <laughs> terrifies me. You know, when you see yeah. something, they're like, "Is that AI?" And I'm like, "In the future, we're going to have no clue." Yeah. If we're if we're to the point where we can question it now, I mean, I'm am I even here hosting Josh oh, and I'm walking? This, this guy's real. Maybe not. No. Uh, Maybe not. But really, what is the latest emerging technology? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. AI for sure. There's a lot of I'm sorry. Okay. No, I get it. It was a dark path. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, be worried, people. Okay. Hey, as an art school, we think about many, many things. Existential thoughts are there. It happens. But <laughs> the point, you know, with AI, like if you think about the internet, right? Y2K, we were all a little bit scared. I was too young to be super scared, but it happened. Um, we. Our industry pivots, and our industry is really adaptable. What I personally would like to see is just better legislation around AI to protect and to support creatives, but it also is a tool. I know plenty of artists, um, some that do also work at Maya, that use AI for their practice in really beautiful and imaginative ways, and there's a future for it. We can all coexist, hopefully, and hopefully there's some really good, you know, advocacy for making sure that artists have their original content protected. Yeah, I mean that's probably one of the biggest issues, right? Yeah. The, the the stealing of intellectual mm -hmm. property or just copying of art and mm -hmm. put it into a chatbot of some kind. Yeah. Any of them, does someone then just suck it and use it for their own thesis or whatever, right? Like, how does how do you prevent that copyright world? And, I, you know, I, I think a lot of it is we sometimes we forget the simplicity of, uh, you know, um, sourcing where you got your source. Yeah. But, you know, some of them are yeah. you know, if, if I use chat GPT, say, say you used it. Yeah. You know, it's just like if the old school days, if I used Encyclopedia Britannica, oh, yeah. I said, I used Encyclopedia, you know, you can't. Man, just that's bringing up work. some memories there. <laughs> Having having to, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! And having to write out yet yet two pages alone of just all your sources, That's having right. to That's list right. it all out. And, oh, does it for you. Brutal. So, brutal. but you know, all that I I personally look at it as like an opportunity, and it can be scary. But also, when we look past the fear, 
and we could see potential we focus on that there's some really cool stuff that yeah. could happen uh, but uh, a little bit more about the, the school what's yeah. what's the population like right now like what, uh, what's the experience like how many yeah. students are there mm -hmm. um I do have notes on this but I have a cheat sheet yeah. uh, for some exact ones and I can give you that um, so enrollment increased 50% prior to the pandemic. So the pandemic happened, you know, that affected everybody. We were on a huge trajectory of like 50% growth. That's major. And it, we haven't really had any major setbacks because of that. And so we're still seeing steady growth. Like Myad is growing very much in terms of other art schools and colleges around the United States. And it's pretty awesome to see. I'm actually a Myad grad myself. Um, so when I went to Maya to the students in the capacity I see now, it's so different. We have so many more students, um, really amazing success, both inside and outside of the building. And yeah, the holiday sale also, just to swing it back that way, you can see a whole lot of that in the breadth and depth of work that we are making here. Yeah. What are some of the other uh, community engagement initiatives you have besides the holiday? Uh, market. Well, I can tell you through my role, so as Director of Galleries and Community Engagement, um, and to be clear, there's a lot of amazing folks at Maya doing community engagement, but through my lens, I direct seven spaces for the school in a gallery context, three of which are on campus, four of which are outside of school. So I walked over here actually from Maya Gallery at the Ave. It's located downtown Milwaukee, right next to the Third Street Market Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, we opened about a year and a half ago to really amazing success. In our first year, we sold over 2,000 individual works, yeah, varied wow. in, you know, varied in price, but some of those were major um, artworks that we sold from an exhibition context, but also we have a shop area, so a consignment place, and that's also an incubation location for students, faculty, staff, and alumni, so our entire community, to sell and show their work. Um, and for me, as director of that space, I love to think of it as an opportunity for folks to play with market, so market experience. Do you want to sell to a customer directly? You can pilot maybe that strange wobble concoction you come up with yeah. for the holiday sale year-round with me. Um, and so one part of the space is a sales component. One part we have rotating exhibitions. We aim for quarterly exhibitions. Right now we have an amazing screen printing exhibition up by our communication design students who they learned how to screen print in under three weeks, mount an exhibition. <laughs> and the work is amazing. Like you couldn't tell that they learned how to do this process in under three weeks. It's great. Sometimes the pressure of a timeline like that makes you yeah. Yeah, really bring that creativity out and it's like it's either gonna happen or not. Yeah. So is, is there, you know, you're talking about all these different works. Is there if if someone couldn't get to one of the galleries, is there like an online space yeah. where things are are purchasable? So Maya Gallery at the Ab is our biggest sort of purchasable venue that we have so you can shop online through us but you can also you know but yeah that that space does have an online component and we do pick up sales though we're not quite there yeah. with shipping um but you can order online and sure. pick it up yeah very cool yeah man it's just it's it's awesome to see and, and i'm not honestly surprised by the growth because um you know i think that as our world changes the opportunities that a school like Maya can offer, you know, it, it attracts people as they're now trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's it's moving away a little bit from traditional roles as new ideas are born and new roles are created in a new world that we're, you know, kind of experiencing yeah. post pandemic. Well, and Yeah, and I like the roles, even the role of the creative, you know, I think it's so multifaceted. So of course, maybe as like a 17, 18 year old, you're going into art school because you feel like you just need to continue to pursue that. You emerge out of a four year program with my head as somebody who's got a ton of critical thinking capacities and honed discipline on critical thoughts and thinking around cultural topics today. Um, and our students specifically, they really focus on empathy. Um, that's the one other big change I've seen sure. in our student body is 
they care about the world. They care about people. And you see that in a lot of the projects that they have. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how do you see that like, get exuded through the art then? Do you, are you yeah. seeing the styles sort of evolve with the style of student? So we just launched, based out of need and necessity, um, a fashion and apparel design major at the college. And, um, you know, at my ad, we kind of say the students show us the next major that we need. Mm -hmm. And so folks were making work in this sort of discipline long before we had the defined major for it. Fibers just became a huge focus, an area, a material, a study. Um, and one of the best projects that kind of came out of that major just this year was adaptable clothing for folks who have disabilities. Mm -hmm. So Clothing that, you know, has easy buttons to unbutton for yourself, sure. to pull on. Um, the focus groups are folks who might might use wheelchairs. And so really working with individuals who want to support that idea with the students, and then they kind of create a fashion line to help support that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, the Is there, within this, the creative um, sort of evolution that's going on. Is there a quintessential uh, Milwaukee style? How is, the, how is the destination influencing the students? Oh, gosh. This is a very visit Milwaukee question, I feel. It is. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll speak from my experience. I'm not from Milwaukee. I'm actually from Dayton, Ohio, and um, I've lived here for 15 years. For me, it's Lake Michigan mm -hmm. as a starting point. Um, so Lake Michigan was just this this possibility, this like also maybe creative um, influence to um, the fact that it is not overwhelming. I think folks do, as just an aside, I think folks like that Milwaukee is navigatable, mm -hmm. that it's still a major city, but there have edges that you can explore. Um, it's not too big, not too small. Um, there's also a real sense of community. Um, I think every time we've had like an admissions day experience that's available to students, like we have one coming up on February 8th, I believe. I know this is a future podcast that may be a future date. <laughs> so it could be wrong, but it's, you know, info day for people yeah. who are interested in coming to the school. The same day we're gonna have a zine fair happening right at the same time with our students. And so those students who are making zines or small print publications, et cetera, they're going to be having that right at the same time. So students can come in and see what we're doing. So we're active. It's it's a space that when you walk in, you feel the creativity and you can see it. And it's all within one building, um, which is yeah. pretty rare, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So along the same lines, yeah. <clears throat> we like to say Milwaukee has a lot of fresh city vibes right now. A lot of cool momentum, things are changing. Uh, what's giving you fresh city vibes? What's what's attracting you? What are you getting uh, sort of addicted to about the about the destination? Um, so, this is outside of my role. I'm still very much a creative, a curator, a cultural producer. Um, the Washington Park Media Center mm -hmm. is three blocks from my house. Um, so when I'm not at my end, which is usually mostly I'm at my end doing something with one of our seven spaces, but I'm not there. That's a space that is so close to me in the Washington Heights area mm -hmm. that I love going to. I just went on like a mini sort of field trip with them and We Grow Greens a couple of weeks ago to see the Fermentation Fest Farm Art Detour out in Sauk County. Um, and in case you don't know what that is, it's like a 55 plus mile driving tour for temporary public art out mm -hmm. in rural Wisconsin, interspersed with farmland and farmers who also want to make their own sculptures, which is really neat. Um, so the media center has very quickly become this hub for like creatives and community. And so they basically, they almost have an open door policy depending on the time of day. You can just walk in and say, hey, how do I you learn how to use this like camera or like I may want to start a podcast, like what can I do? And they've been pretty great about being an educa education space for the community, but also for folks to just pop on over and see what's up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's run by Sarah Delighton and West Tank. 
Very cool. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned the, the sort of public art tours and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, obviously Milwaukee's known for a lot of great murals and sculptures awesome. and the like. Um, you, you have a, a favorite uh, public art in, in the city itself that you mm. are always like, have to show up maybe a friend or yeah. calls back to you? Um, okay. This is, this is maybe also more of an, a nuanced uh, public art project. So there's this artist, his name is Paul Druka. Mm -hmm. He is sometimes a sleeper here in Milwaukee. If you know Paul, you know he's not a sleeper, like hit. But like, he is one of the best, my favorite artists that live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And so um, in the early 2000s, he concepted a park called Blue Dress Park. Blue Dress Park, and you have to kind of imagine it with me if you if you want to get get along with this ride. So it's on Holton Street Bridge, leading north, and it's that slice of the bridge that's kind of triangular shaped. Mm -hmm. The road doesn't follow it. There's mm -hmm. it kind of it's the road still curves like a road, but there's that triangle. And so Paul named that triangle Blue Dress Park, and he has then. Um, supported activations in that space for a long time. So, like when he crescent it, Blue Dress Park, he had a quartet activate that space in kind of like a party. Um, he's also done uh, worked with other artists to create like a large like hot dog picnic. So they covered it in gingham, and then you could just go and have a picnic there. Um, I did a project with a few collaborators to do to find Milwaukee's best artist um, twice. <laughs> And it was open to only non-artists. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had to compete in sports style uh, activities that had no made no yeah. sense uh, in order to get this title. So one was like the slowest race in a gradually descending uh, race line. <laughs> and so you had to always be moving. But if oh my you God. fell out of the race line, you were done. It was the most exciting 45 minutes. 45 minutes? You know, that I had seen yeah. in a long time uh, when that happened. So, the slowest race. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I love that. So it's like a place for whimsy and public investigation, yeah, civic good. investigation, and also that space particularly has some of the best views of Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's good views from, from that area. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Lake Michigan earlier. Yeah. Uh, like the beaches, walking along the lake. Does it provide inspiration for a lot of students? Do you hear the students talking about it? I mean, yeah. I think, you know, we. So Maya, so Maya really has also like a really wonderful, and I don't know if we talk about it a lot, like humanities department in writing. And um, what I found out was really unique specifically about Maya is that we require, based on what happens in maybe other art schools, four years of writing. Um, and that's supposedly kind of a lot, um, but it's really important. And we also have science courses that are mandatory for students to take. And so... Freshwater sciences is actually a huge part of what we have going on um, with the school, in addition to humanities classes that are actively engaged around our water waterways. Um, and you will see students who have that interest in the sciences kind of start to pull away from some of that wildlife and that natural life that they're seeing and have that show up in the work. So for example, we have an exhibition up currently um, that is dedicated to 50 years of the college. So we've been mm -hmm. open, we're celebrating our 50th year right now. And when it was putting together a 128 slide presentation <laughs> of just the digital work submitted for this um, exhibition, there's this artist and I believe their name is Maggie Carroll and I could be wrong, but Maggie Carroll is an amazing illustrator regardless. Um, that had this gorgeous illustration of uh, Wisconsin waterways and it had like a beautiful bird um, and other wildlife that is around that ecosystem. And so you will see that happen. And I have another artist that I work with, Michael LaRudo. He's a senior right now. He makes really wonderful watercolors of toads and like blue herons. Lots of different wildlife that you'll see both here in Wisconsin, but also because he's from Florida, you'll see some of those uh, critters as sure. well. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. We are a bird city, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. Got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm super excited to to check out the holiday sale too. I think it's going to be you know just like you said, it's going to be a great uh, opportunity to just see everything that Maya offers. Mm -hmm. um, not only for you know people that might think 
they might want to attend mm -hmm. the school, but also just people that don't know a whole lot about Maya except, except for the fact that it exists, yeah. right? And to see the, the work that's being done there. Um, if people are trying to find out more information about the school or the holiday sale, where should they go? Go online. So just for everything about Maya, maya.edu. But if you want to learn about the holiday sale specifically, it's maya.edu slash holiday sale. Okay, that'd be a great, some great social media coming out of Maya. Yes. What's, oh, what's the handle? What, where's the Instagram? It's you know? Maya College, yeah. all one word. I'm sure there's all kinds of like amazing artwork that you yeah. shared or like, inspirational pieces. Yeah. It's, it's, I have to tell you, our social media is so chock full that like when I'm like, that we have so much going on that I have to get it scheduled months in like a month in advance to get a slot for a day of the week mm -hmm. to get what we have going on because yeah. there's so much to get out there about what we have happening at the school yeah well that's amazing i mean obviously the school is a, a, a great treasure for the community great ways for visitors to interact with the galleries and the, the spaces to uh, help support the students and their learning and and obviously the school also helps bring some new residents here as well. Yeah. So that's always a fantastic thing. So hopefully people get out, explore, find their new path th uh, through Maya, whether that's through uh, education or through inspiration. And we really appreciate you taking time today to join us. Yeah, thank you, Monica. Yeah, this is so fun. Thank you to the Joshes. All right. <laughs>